what I wanted to talk about on this episode today was why I left the fitness industry. And the title might sound kind of dramatic, like I had a huge exit. So I'll give you a little bit of a scope on that. I don't take any clients unless they're friends that live in the same city that I do, and they're willing to drive to my garage and work out, usually you know, 5 a.m. to 6 a.m., something like that. I don't take any online clients right now, and I don't see that happening for the foreseeable future. What this sort of revival is, is me creating content around my experience and then with long-term goals of having a podcast where I bring on other fitness professionals that actually do this full-time to talk about their experiences either as parents or working with parents to help provide you with better advice. So I'm going to be much more on the documentary journal side of this experience. This is not me trying to build up my fitness business again and get more clients and do that whole thing. Uh, this is me more of a hobbyist, creating content for those that need it, sharing my experience and my knowledge, and then sharing the experience and knowledge of other professional trainers who do run a full-time business, who do see this every single day. My knowledge stopped in 2020. So if things have evolved since then, I haven't really kept up with the current science. I mean, I plan to at least talk to people who know what's going on, but I, I don't tend to pioneer my own fitness business as a result of creating content. So as everyone knows, in 2020, things changed for lots of people. One of the industries that was hit the hardest outside of probably like restaurants and food industries and you know things like that was the fitness industry. For the first, I think, seven to eight months, even longer, gyms were on and off closed down or shut down. And at that time in 2022, I was already looking to figure out a way to get out of the gym setting 24-7 and get into the online fitness business. So I was already building that two years prior. So in 2020 or 2018, I was starting to build my online business through social media, through my website, through YouTube and creating content and taking clients online. By 2022, I had a couple of clients online, but it certainly wasn't at a point where I could sustain myself with that business. So when gym shut down was actually the greatest time in my fitness, a professional fitness career that I ever had because I was actually getting paid by the government to stay at home because I couldn't go to work and then work on my business to try to catapult that into the future and, and make that my sustainable income. So all of 2020 was me trying to build up my fitness business enough to sustain my income or match the income that I was making in the gym, but online. So I joined a, a fitness mentorship as a result of that. One of the most amazing groups of people and well-organized programs I've ever done. And, um, that was very, very helpful and very, very fruitful. And I learned probably more than I've ever learned from any sort of venture on my own. And as a result, I started to build my business up a little bit more. By the time we get to November of 2020, I'm getting married and the money just isn't there. And this has always been kind of a, a struggle for me in fitness. I've always worked for people that supplied the clients because I didn't want to do that. I didn't have salesman skills. I still don't have salesman skills. And I later learned that if you really want to succeed in fitness, you have to be your own salesperson and you have to learn how to close. And that was just not my area of expertise. I made attempts at trying to become a better salesman. I took courses for that. But at the end of the day, it just wasn't a skill set that I was going to develop in a timely manner to actually make more money when I needed to make more money. So it just didn't happen. And I had to accept that. And so I looked for other work. I worked at UPS for their seasonal position. They told me to apply to be a full-time driver. But even after just doing the part-time seasonal stuff, I realized that one, your schedule really isn't controlled by you. Long story short, you have to deliver all the packages that are on your truck or all the packages that are out, which means that even if you're done with your route, you have to go and help somebody else or you, know, you should go and help somebody else. And so you could get off at you know, 6 p.m. or you could get off at 9 p.m. And I just wasn't willing to live with a schedule that was that variable. I'd already done that in fitness where I was waking up at 4 a.m., working until like 9 a.m., coming home, and then going back to the gym from 3 to 6.30, 7. I just didn't want to do that anymore. So I didn't go with, with the UPS job. The company that my wife was working at was hiring for the warehouse. So I said, I mean, I'll apply. Let's, you know, let's at least see what it is. And so I applied for that job. I think like a month later, I got the job. I started working in that department for about a month. And then there was an opening for a marketing position within that company. 
And so I applied for that because even though I don't have any formal training in marketing, I had a lot of self-taught marketing experience through building my online business. And so I said, you know what? I can give it a shot. They need a social media manager and they need somebody who can create graphics. I've done all of that for my own fitness business. I bet I could laterally move those skills over to that. So that's what I did. And I got that job. And then about two and a half years after that, the manager at that company, uh, the, the marketing manager at the company, she left and the position was open for that. I applied for that. And as of November of last year, I'm the marketing manager at that business. So that's been my kind of career the last four years, so to speak. And that's essentially the reason why I left the fitness business is it just wasn't profitable enough for me to even make what I was making at the gym, which still wasn't enough money. And I was kind of panicking to a certain extent because I really loved fitness, but I also really love sustainability and a reliable paycheck that wasn't different every single time. And so I've learned that while I have an entrepreneurial spirit, I don't necessarily have the guts or the, I don't know what the right word is. I just don't have all the pieces it takes to be an entrepreneur, but I am a self-starter and I love to do things on my own and, and venture off into things, but I'm certainly not business minded. I'm more philanthropic maybe. Like I had a hard enough time selling fitness packages to people because I was like, I learned all this information for free for the most part. Why can't they just have it for free? Terrible business mindset, but that's the way I thought of things. And so that's been sort of my life the last four years. That's why I got out of fitness. I still love fitness. I still love talking about it. Obviously, that's why I'm doing this podcast again. I'm starting up my Instagram account again, my YouTube account again. I just want to be able to utilize that 15 to almost 20 years worth of experience for others that might need it, that might need somebody who's you know been in the trenches that long to give them perspective. And I'm very much not your the clinical professional when it comes to this. Like I ask myself, if I really am going to do this, I want to do it my way because there's no reason why I can't. There's no stipulation. This is all me. So I'm going to be approaching this from a very experienced-based anecdotic level, which means that a lot of the things that I say, I'm not going to have a study to back up. I just have experience working with a number of clients who all had this experience that all that I saw patterns and all of those things. And I'm going to talk about that, but I'm going to be transparent about the fact that I don't have any like medical study to back this up. So as long as you know that ahead of time, I think we're good. I don't think I need to say anything more in more to, uh, you know, in that regard. Anyway, this is the first episode of my podcast. I'm going to try to keep these about 15 to 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes or longer if I have a guest. But anytime I feel like recording an episode, I'm going to record an episode. If you're listening to this or you're seeing this on social media and there's any sort of topic that you want me to talk about, I'd be more than happy to make that into an episode. This is going to be very much a community focused hobby slash podcast. I will use any sort of information that I get from my audience or topics that they want to talk about. Um, but until then I will come up with some topics that I have seen, you know, people ask about on the internet or have seen online, social media, whatever it might be. And I'll use those as kind of my guide for now. So anyway, thanks a ton for listening. I appreciate you listening. Um, I'll see you in the next episode.